Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Now, today's guest listeners needs very little introduction. She is the reigning badminton champion. We've been saying that for a little while. It is good to have you with us, Piggy March. Hello. Thank you for having me. It is very nice to have you. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, First of all, Happy New Year. How has your winter been? Oh, the winter's been good, really. Um, it's been quite a relaxed winter. and quite nice um just managed to muck out my house and sort out some of the rooms which <laughs> I haven't done for ages and just d- some different things which has been which has been nice and the weather's been pretty kind to us hasn't it so um it seems pretty stress-free actually as far as the winter goes are you one of those people that sort of gets into the new year you're obviously ready for a bit of a break but actually January comes start getting itchy feet thinking right okay things are ramping up a bit now yeah, definitely. And I I did give most of my horses a break at the end of last year. So it was probably as quiet a winter as I've ever had. But I felt that we needed a rest at the end of last year. And I think, you know, for owners as well, we, it's been a hard couple of years, hasn't it? And they've paid a lot for horses being, it, being in and training, but not doing masses. So it was just quite nice for the majority of them to just have a good enough break to come back in 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 December but definitely at the moment Christmas is out of the way a new year it's you know you start getting back on that hamster wheel every morning you wake up and you're switched on again your brain's on it and 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 away you go it's it's quite a different feeling at the moment Christmas has been to you know November and December is quite relaxed. How long do your horses normally have off? Well it depends really we we vary it um and it depends how old they are what they've done through the season how much they've done um and you know whether they need to stay in to you know do more work on the flat or or some benefit from going hunting or team chasing or things like that so every horse is really quite different but you know this year we did definitely everything that was in our yard did have six weeks off and they have shoes off they go out in a field go out with sort of three or four of them um and you know they have a a great time and obviously this winter was amazing because it was so mild and so dry for a long time so they they had a really nice holiday and it worked well but we're we're excited now to get going get ready again just quickly who turns into the hairiest mud monster in the yard Oh God! Um, I think they all look fairly hideous. To be honest, they came in. It's like they've got a bit of mammoth in the breeding somewhere. Or, or something. <laughs> they are hideous when they come back. But um, the cute factor went to our old fella. That's a little the grey ex racers. Um, so obviously he's full thoroughbred, but his his fluff. He just was like a little powder puff. And we ride them hairy for a while. And it's like getting on like a little Arctic fox or an Arctic rabbit <laughs> or something. Because he's so tiny as well. So he won the cute factor. But um, um, I, I think I, to be honest, I'll let you I'll let you give it to our old fellow because he's one of my favourites. I oh. um, I saw him, I think it was at Barbary last summer. Um yeah. And he is just such a cool little pocket rocket. And he's got such an interesting story. And yeah, he's definitely got it. I have a bit of a soft spot for him. Um, Let's talk a bit about back end of last year, first of all, because it was a, it's been a tough couple of years in all manner of ways with with COVID and cancellations and uncertainty and and everything else. But actually the end of last year finished with a team gold, individual silver. Yeah. In Avanche, just tell us about the overwhelming feeling around those Europeans because there was so much pressure going in around the British team and expectation was so high. Did you feel bad at all in, in the sort of the team bubble as such? No, I don't think we did really because it was there were good girls out there, really good, a really good team, and there was just a a brilliant atmosphere amongst us as a team, to be honest. And I don't think you know, it all seemed very relaxed and, you know, just just good sport amongst ourselves, to be honest. And I think, um, I don't think it was at all a, stress, a stressful environment. I was just relieved, you know, personally, I was relieved to get there. Um, you know, it was a it was a real tough summer for my owners, you know, with the nearly but not the Olympics again. And mm-hmm. and it was, um, 
it was it was really hard on them to do make the decision they wanted to which was totally the right thing for their horse and you know the real you know it was a big team discussion and they really just put the horses you know welfare first of being in that situation and having not done much having run him much in the two years because of covid and they were desperate to just you know use him somewhere in the autumn where they can watch him and and you know get the fun out of the horse that you know they wanted to so um you know to not go and you know they went through quite a lot of heartache and a lot of stress and so i was just so relieved to get there be on a team it was the first time they'd ever been on a british team as well the experience is great we're so well looked after being on a you know team gb and you know they had just an amazing week and the horse was as fantastic as i you know hoped he would be and you know it was just all all brilliant it was just such a relief when it all finished but at the same time we did actually have time to enjoy it which you don't normally at those big things you sort of just think thank god you know it all went well and it is a relief but we we did enjoy it, it was it was you know the weather was good the place was great great the um, you know, we were just also relieved to get there. There's so much strength and depth in Team GB at the minute. And I think there were so many people all trying for the Olympics because there was so so many good people there. And they could have taken three teams easily to an Olympics and three very good teams. So, mm-hmm. um, so for us all to actually, you know, have something to aim for, you know, with Burley gone as well and things like that, actually something as a sports person to get you your teeth into again and really have a drive to get back up to that something that means something um and and something great for the owners as well and so it was absolutely brilliant it was a fantastic week and you know definitely will go down in one of my memories as a you know a really cool time and um we all enjoyed it lots you you make a really good point and actually brookfield um who own Brookfield Innocent, they're, they're huge supporters of eventing it in general, John and yeah. Chloe Perry, Alison Swinburne. And yeah. the amount that owners put in to having horses at the top level, the heartache that they go through, because it is such a roller coaster, uh, must make that sort of feeling, that team effort feeling at the end of the day, so much sweeter, because everybody has been through this incredible journey to get to that point. And with horses, there is absolutely no guarantee, as we all know. Um, So for the result to to come out as it did, I hope there were a few glasses of bubbly at the end of the week. Yes. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But it's, yeah, like you say, it's a massive, it's a massive team thing. I was, you know, they found it really hard and they were also upset, you know, for me. And I was like, God, don't worry about me. You know, this is life. I'm. Uh, I'm a big girl, old enough and ugly enough to deal with, you know, whatever. But it it was it was hard just for a while, and I think they felt the pain. And so it was, yeah, it was great. It was, you know, they were just so excited to be there, so proud to represent the country and everything. And like you say, they've they've supported eventing um, for many many years, and so it was just it was fantastic for them, and and very very much deserved. A magic magic week. Um. We'll talk a little bit about plans coming into this year in just a moment. But I have to ask you about your winter months because there is a brand new challenge on the horizon, Piggy TV, which um, has been a huge hit. I have been absolutely fascinated watching everything on social media. Tell us a bit more about it because safe to say, Thomas, your husband, has not let you have a break over the last couple of months, really. Oh no, um, um, but it's different, you know. It's a change is always like a break, isn't it? It's not being on that hamster wheel of three o'clock every weekend morning of traveling about going to another event. But it's it's different and it's a bit fresh and it yes, it's exciting, and it's something that last year we we sort of spoke about through the year of wanting to do it for this year. I did some vlogs last year, um, and I'm not a social media fan um you know I'm not very good at it I don't you know I don't um you know but times have changed haven't they like life's changed a bit and I thought there are it's such an interesting sport and I think it's very fascinating when you get behind the scenes of the training or the you know just the all all round um training and partnerships that you have with your horses and and I wanted to share a bit more 
of it with people, which it, I had a, so many people come to me at events or say, oh, my God, I love your videos. And can they come for training and and things like that? And I, I really enjoy helping. I like but I, I don't think I'm a particularly great teacher, but I enjoy helping people or sharing my experiences with people, whether it's good or it's, you know, especially the bad because you can't be afraid of failing in our game and, and we get a, way more bad days than you ever do good days. And I think social media is so hung up these days on everyone just putting the good stuff on. And, you know, young riders actually getting quite lost in what's important of, you know, making it in the sport or making it as a horse rider. And, you know, you can just follow so much stuff on, on social media that paints not a real true picture of it. And when a lot of people said they wanted to come for lessons, um, you know, it's it's so hard once the season gets going of time. We just can't do it. I can't commit to it. I can't get organised enough to think, yes, next Wednesday I can do six lessons because it might have rained all week the week before and that's the only day that it's not raining and so you're allowed to go cross-country schooling or something. And, you know, you can't plan when you're a busy event rider to sort of put days aside really for teaching when you get so busy. So. Um, that was what I wanted to do, do really. And instead of paying you eighty pounds to come for your lesson, I thought you'd probably get so much more in four months or a lessons worth of of knowledge or interest or just exercises or things you can relate to. And and I don't want to do. I'm not doing it to be like this is how you do it. You've got to follow me to learn to you know get to the top I just want to do it to give lots of people different ideas and insights and and show my you know mess ups my cock ups at the same time as well where I think you know I've I didn't do that well enough I should have ridden it like this or that or or going through the ups and downs or or sitting there and saying do you know what I didn't get to the Olympics and just for a month it felt rubbish you know and I will throw something around and I will drop kick Thomas around <laughs> for a while or, or whatever because it was you know and I think it's I don't want to you know shy away from you know being honest of the ups and downs of it but the you know try to enjoy and get everyone enjoying our sport enjoying our horses and try to get the best out of ourselves the whole time and so that's that's what I'm trying to try to share with people and and do and Thomas is amazing at doing the whole um video side the techno side so thankfully you don't have to look at me yapping at you the whole time you get you get video um footage over the top of me trying to garble something at you and um so it makes it you know it's it's quite fun but I think I hope it's just something different and something that people can relate to and will be of use to people growing up or trying to get into the sport or try to improve ourselves and our horses I think that relatability piece is massive because you know what we see on social media like quite often what looks perfect or a horse going through an exercise perfectly and it's yeah. great but actually it can just make people feel a bit mm, about themselves because it doesn't always work yeah. like that for them or they go to a big event and they see you know great results but actually the amount of hard work and the sort of working on all those little nuances and things not going quite right have all come in the the build up to that and so it's really important to be able to show it and I actually love uh, something that went up this last week or a couple of weeks ago by the time this show might go out is um, Veneer Kamira Tilly who's the badminton champion and you're talking all about kind of the the foundations and the basics and this is the five star champion at badminton <laughs> You know, she is a five star legend. Yeah. She's got top 10 placings coming out of her ears. Yeah. And she isn't necessarily an out and out world beater, but yet so, she can really show how the work at home can look and yeah. what you can do with it. And that's so important. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. And I nearly, you know, there's times that you don't want to show the video because it's like, oh, my God, that felt terrible. Or that didn't look very good. You know, and I, I think I turned to Thomas at the end. I was like, oh, all right, because he's there with this, his video. And he's like, yeah. And and you want to say, oh, oh no, you know, we'll, we'll just leave it. or we'll do it on, on another day when maybe we're a little bit better or something. And it's like, do you know what? No, because this is the first day in the school. This is real. This is how she is. This, these are all the things I struggle with her 
doing and this is what you have to start to try and be aware of as a rider that needs to be better and never for a second you sit there and think oh you know Tilly Bean, you've won badminton you're amazing because most of the time you know try to prepare them up for those big things it feels pretty ordinary and there's so much attention to detail of just trying to get those extra half marks or mark the whole time to you know and then you're on a very fine line when you get to the actual moment of of it being good but it's so much that needs you know producing up to it even though she's done what she's done and is as old as she she is it's still always going back to basics and trying to produce the result later on out of her and what about the rest of your team as well because you're all involved in this aren't you like there is so much yeah. expertise uh, at team march and everybody yeah. is able to to share it yeah and i love i love my team i love my girls um it's a really important part of you know our industry uh, my, my life you know it is a lifestyle riding horses and and i like to go out on the yard and have great people that i want to be with for the day and I like helping them I like if they if they come here as a stepping stone to go off in the future and do something good for themselves I like to be to be part of it but I'm I'm very proud of the girls that stay there and become very very good girls like um Del and and Ames who who have um you know their knowledge and their hard work they've done over the years and you can't underestimate you know the the intelligence as well of these girls that that are you, th you you know a lot of people can just think grooms are you know grooms maybe or it's it you know you're the one that rides so you're the one that gets the result but there is so much more that goes to the to the whole thing and i would like them to feel it's not just a a time of their life that they've worked here and they've mucked out and you know led up a winner for me wherever or done whatever but it is it's a lifestyle for them and they can try to find some sort of career from it as well um whether it is you know helping with these sorts of things for their knowledge whether it's books whether it's little videos whether it's you know because so many people can learn so much for them and i think riders can't underestimate how you know it can change your result from having your wingman that thinks the same as you that arrives at the event in the mindset you need as a, as a rider you know there's so many little things that just having that that person with you that's as sharp as you are that wants the result you do and that does know those little bits of the management and you know the help for me you know what what aims can do for me when we get to an event of just being a a good person very professional she's great with the owners she's very good with the horses she's you know there's so much more that goes um goes into it than just being someone that can look after a horse and and i'm very proud of them so i want them to feel that they're part of you know me doing something here a bit different and and i want them to you know share it with us because it is a the whole thing here is is a team effort and and it's all of those people that are sort of working towards the the goal and as you say quite often the rider gets the glory but actually yeah the team behind them are just as important. I know we've had Amy um, Phillips, who's your head girl on the podcast before it and some of our Super Groom shows. And she's talked a bit about her relationship with Vinir Kamira. And she would be an amazing example of how management um, at an event can really make a massive impact on a performance, a result, and ultimately the health, the happiness and the well-being, and, the, and therefore the performance of a horse. Totally. Absolutely, you know, without without doubt, and you know, even even when Tilly comes back in December, you know, I think, oh God, I've got you know five <laughs> months to try and rev this up. How many bad transitions? How many? How crooked do I feel every day of trying to ride? You know, and Ames is just so excited. Oh, Tilly Bean comes back. You know, and it's like she's jumping about because it's that's her her child sort of thing. It's like her days involve around these horses it starts making her tick to be honest that, that's what gets her out of bed just to you know do everything she can do for these guys you know it's a um of stepping in the right direction to go to the big shows that sh she loves so um no she's she's brilliant she's a really good girl and what about going into 2022 because obviously it is all systems go we've got a, another major championship coming up with protoni with the world championships in september um 
obviously a lot before then. First of all, I just wanted to ask you, badminton is back in, in yeah. May. Burley is back in September. Yeah. How important is that to the sport of eventing? You know, we've missed them over the last Oh, years. God. I, I honestly don't think people realise, you know, how important it is to get them back on all levels. Um, and I think if it didn't, there would be a lot of people that would struggle to continue with the sport. And I'm only speaking of talking to, you know, a lot of top riders, professional riders, um, people that try to, you know, this is our livelihood as, as well. It is our business. Um, and it's been very, very tough for two years, more so than people realise. And it's been hideous for the owners as well with those very good horses. I know it's life and it's been a pain and it's been difficult for lots of people and various different reasons as well. But it it has been very different, difficult. And I think you know business wise financially you've got to have the big shows back on for the great horses for the owners for and it's such a knock on effect at the business of having the good events to go to for every levels even the grassroots levels the whole industry um buying selling horses moving you know there's there's so much more that goes through it in it but you know it's just interesting speaking to a lot of top riders how you know financially it's made it absolutely impossible you know our sport is has not been in a great place at all as well as with covid with you know all the difficulties of traveling and the expenses of everything and i think i think we've really got to try and get back get the sport back and keep moving in a positive direction of bringing them back and try to help you know, people, the professional people and the owners and everything support us for the sport because I think it was more detrimental than people realised the last two years and it's it's just got to got to get back going. It's tough as well, isn't it? You know, we, we're going to see a changing economic sort of climate and, and you the, the impact that has then on, on sponsors and the amount of money that's yeah. available, you know, yeah. for their marketing budgets. And, yeah. you know, that's just from one side of things. Yeah. It, it is hard. I mean, you said at the start of the show, actually, your owners have had it quite hard over the last couple of yeah. years with the amount they've had to to put in. And um, I think it's one of those things that the cumulative effect builds and builds and builds. And actually, you know, we need those pressure release valves of the badmintons, the burleys, and hopefully, hopefully all systems yeah. go this year and it, and it will make a difference. Um, yeah, um, I think so. And there are people out there that want to help as well um and i know that so i hope i hope we club together as a sport and the you know get some voices at the the top end as well that that help keep it going to keep it because it's a brilliant sport it's a really fantastic sport and it's like don't don't um you don't want to be losing out or dropping people out it's like come on guys we can we can do this let's get it back and move it move it forwards I, I love the saying when the tough, going gets tough, the tough get going. And yeah. we saw it, you know, when COVID hit and people pulling together and everything else. And actually, yeah. the eventing community is such a strong one. And it's so yeah. special in so many ways that yeah. now is the time for everybody to kind of pull together and say, OK, let's let's do our yeah. bit and see what we yeah. can make a difference and, and give everybody the best chance. We had a um, listeners, you might have heard it. We did a show uh, 2022, a pivotal year for eventing. I said to Sam and um, Piggy. Uh, let's have a nice, fun, chit-chatty show to start the year on the podcast. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're debating the future of the sport. Um, <laughs> and it's an hour and a half later, and I'm like, well... Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that, and I haven't really spoken to anyone, so I'm sorry if I've stoked that again. No, but... no, to be honest, that makes what we said, I think, it reinforces it even more, because that's essentially yeah. what, you know, the, the conversation was around. The modern event horse has changed slightly. Yes. In my opinion, there will always be horses for courses and, and the Lemoulins, yeah. the Kentuckys, the Pose, everything, yeah. you know, have their place. But Badminton and Burley, the pinnacle of the sport, you know, if we want to keep it there, we this yeah. is a really, really important year. It's a pivotal year for it. Um yeah. let's talk your plans for 2022. Can I pick your brains? You love Badminton, you're the defending champion. Yeah. <laughs> Are you planning on heading back to defend your title? 
Yes, yes. Yes, that's what we like to hear. Definitely. Um, if all goes well, if we keep the wheels turning and everything, but Vanir Kimira is, um, yeah, that will definitely be her aim if she's um, up and going. She's 17 years old now. Um, and, but she's still, she's still got it in her. She came out of Bicton very well. Um, and she's still keen to do a job. She's a little bit lower than she was <laughs> when she was four or five years younger. But um, and she's never particularly got that high when she does things, but she loves it. She still loves the sport. She's game. She is, um, you know, there's still life in her. So, um, of course, we'll have a go. It'll just be brilliant to be back. So, um, yes, she will go there. And then um, Brookfield Innocent might do as well. I'm not too, we're keeping options open of, you know, just how he comes out. We're sort of just going to very much do our own thing and let him tell us where we want to go, how he is. Um, he takes a few runs in the spring. He's quite a spooky um, so-and-so. So he needs, you know, he needs a few runs and get going and he's got to feel like his brain's in gear and we're ready because it just comes so early. So um, that will be um, hopefully what we do there or maybe Kentucky I don't know like we say all options are open and so yes we're just going to do do our own things for the year it is the world games next year which um would obviously be very exciting but like we've said already the strength and depth for you know the British team is just immense at the minute and so um you know I think there what will be will be and um, we're just gonna you know get going and if were there great if not we'd love to go to Burley so if not <laughs> I have a feeling I, I could I'm racking my brains now I, I don't think I've totally made this up but I'm fairly certain Thomas might have said to Durham a couple of years ago or there was a bet Burley 2022 <laughs> Brookfield Innocent wins I think <laughs> ask him about it i yeah, I, I remember. I was like throwing rumours around now, Piggy. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I remember it well because I was like, why on earth do you say stupid things like that? But he was, <laughs> I was like, that's great. Thanks. Um, but yes, he did say it. And and he's a, you know, you think of, you have lots of horses in your lifetime and he's he's a galloper and he's a scopey horse. You know, he's a, he's a burly horse. So I'd be, I'd be excited to, try and ride him round and and see what he was made of and um I'd just be excited to get him there so uh, you know I don't mind it's just watch the space options yeah options. who knows who knows Different options yeah um one of the questions that we love to put to our guests on the show and our listeners love it is one horse in your yard uh, to follow for the year and it could be um a horse that we know it could be a, a youngster coming through but some something that you think a lot of and I know actually we had this conversation uh Cooley Lancer I think was one we yeah. had a conversation about two years ago on yeah. when Nicole met Piggy 18 yeah. months ago maybe there you go listeners a plug back for an old show um have you got I know it's like asking you to pick a favorite child yeah, but. there's no there's no favourites. Um, so I'm not gonna say there's one that's looking like it's um amazing and way better than all the others because one. there's but but I do have a new horse that I'm really excited to go and see what he's about. And he's a little grey stallion called Halo. Um he we've had a name change Jane McGiven brought him at the end of last year and his his posh name was Scuderia 1918 Humphreys or something so Kevin McNabb won Osberton three star on okay, him okay yeah and Jane but, McGiven is the owner who owned Quarrycrest Echo who's yes. been a huge supporter of yours exactly okay exactly. amazing halo yeah like so that. he's coming he's now nine and um so he'll he'll step up to advanced this year at some point probably in the summer um but it's just a new a new adventure that we're sort of getting into and you know having a stallion as well or doing something a little bit different and he's just a really really cute fun little horse that I'm just quite excited to get going but it's also something a little bit different and um so I'm just really interested in that one 
Will he be? Because obviously the March stud has been growing as a, a breeding programme over the last few years. Um, and I know we spoke to Tom about it last year. Is the idea to use him within the March stud as well? Or will he be purely competition based for now? Um, I think purely competition based to start with, because and he hasn't covered yet. So he doesn't know what it's all about yet. Doesn't know what it's um, all about. Yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> and, and so I thought I was just going to keep him to competition this year to just see what I think he is. You know, but it will be quite a, you know, it's obviously always quite a big step up once you go from three to four star. You know, it separates the men from the boys a bit of what sort of horse you have. He's only a little horse, um, loads of jump. Um but it will be, I would just love to really get to know him first before um, he starts other duties. So I know, you know, what his temperament's really like and that sort of thing at the out and about of the show. So I get a real partnership with him before he's he's used too much um, and see what he is for the, for the future. Um, and so probably maybe he wouldn't start all that till the end of end of next year. Um, but we will see. Like you say, it's it's like interesting. Great. It's new, and and we, he would be one that I think Thomas would also use. He's ex incredibly well bred for the show jumping, but he's just a cute little athlete of a horse. So um, who knows? Who knows? But he's interesting. Watch this space Halo. There you go, listeners. Yeah. That's what we want. we just like a name to keep an eye on that might yeah. be a bit new, that might be a little bit off the radar yeah. um, to be able to watch through the season, as well as obviously all the big. Big guns as well. Uh, Cooley Lancer made the step up to four star last year, and I know he's one that you think a massive amount of. What yeah. are the fans with him this year? He's only nine this time, isn't he? He is. He yeah. is, and he actually missed, you know, sort of nearly a year from the summer of his seven-year-old year to you know late spring of his eight-year-old year, and he he had a run out at Hartbury when he led at Hartbury in the three star this year and so I don't know the qualification rules I need to check them but I think he's got to do one I think you have to do a three star and be clear um so I've got to try and get one of those done somewhere so he might go he might end up being back at Blenheim for the um long or I cram cram things in earlier to get him to a long earlier but you know he's a he's a very nice horse so you know, I'll just go, we'll, we'll wait and see. But I'm excited about him. He's a, He was amazing at Blenheim for the little mileage that he had and how amazing he was and exciting he felt. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Lots to look forward to. Um, can I ask you, what are you most looking forward to in 2022 of the eventing season? I think I know the answer to this, actually. It's got to be badminton, hasn't it? Just, it's got to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to be, you know, we, you've got to say, yes, we're on green light. Just have that something to something to go for again and get everything back and going forward. So that'd be amazing. Well, look, we're looking forward to following your progress um, this year. Piggy, thank you so much for coming on to chat to us. It is always a pleasure to have you on the show. It's been lovely to catch up. Listeners, we hope you've enjoyed it as well. Go and check out Piggy TV if you haven't already. <laughs> And um, if you loved the Piggy Vlogs, then you will love this as well. I've absolutely no doubt about it. But we have got lots more in store for you over the next couple of months. And uh, our next, within the next few weeks, listeners, I think we'll have one of those riders and horses to watch for 2022 shows for you as well. So look, thank you, Piggy. We'll be back very soon on the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>